find our wonderful fiddler out here, Jerry, to help me start this uh, next uh, story. See him? There he is in the wings. You want a chair? No? Like that? Oh, okay. Um, in uh, Ireland, uh, one of the counties there is County Roscommon. And in County Roscommon, there is a village called Ballardine. In the village of Ballardine, there's a little town square. And in the square, there is a statue of a peddler. And this is the story of that peddler called the Peddler of Ballardine. There was once a poor, but a kind-hearted peddler. Every day he would put a sack on his back and he'd walk the rocky roads. Now whenever he came to a square, a fair, a crossroads, wherever it was that a few people gathered, he would spread out his wares. And the peddler of Ballardine, he'd cry out, Pots, pads for sale, needles, ribbons, knives, bows, come and buy them here. Well, you know how it is. Often a few boys would be the first to come up. And one of them would pick up a pocket knife or something and say, Hey, peddler, peddler, how much for this? Well, that peddler knew right away if the boy could afford the knife or not. And if he couldn't, more often than not, the peddler would say something like, Lad, uh, you know that knife? The one you got in your hand there? You know, that knife has been doing nothing but weighing me down for months. You know, I've been looking for somebody to take it off my hands just to lighten my load a little bit. Why would, uh, would, uh, would you do that for me? Well, what do you think he'd say? Yeah. Absolutely. And the boy would take this knife. He'd run off, he'd show all his friends, and he would be so happy. And that's what the peddler would take for his payment. A little bit of that happiness. Well, of course, the fact was he gave away far more than he sold. And the townspeople, they were always standing nearby, and they were noticing this. Can you play the townspeople for me for a second here? Ready? It's real easy. Just say, ready? Peddler's a fool! Fool. You got this part down. <laughs> Give it away more than he sells. Give it away more than he sells. He'll have nothing to peddle. <laughs> and nothing to eat. And nothing to eat. Very good. good. And of course, the townspeople were right. Townspeople are usually right about that kind of stuff. When the peddler would make his way home, he'd be followed by the stray dogs. Now, most people would just shoo dogs like that away, but the peddler, he'd always stop. And he'd reach into his bag, and he'd, he'd find him some moldy cheese or some old bread. He'd feed the dogs. And then he'd make his way home, where he lived, at the crossroads near the town of Ballardine. He lived in a small mud and wattle hut. But outside of his hut, he had a beautiful cherry tree. And everyone knew the cherries on the peddler's tree, every summer, they were darker, they were sweeter. They were more beautiful than any cherry in all of County Roscommon. And of course, the blackbirds knew that too. And they'd swoop down out of the skies, they'd eat half of them up. And he'd let the rabbits come out of the fields and eat up some of his potatoes and his carrots. And of course, the neighbors, they were always yelling, Peddler, shoo the critters away, man. They're robbing you blind. And the peddler, he'd say, ah, they're not exactly robbing me. Nothing sings as sweetly as a bird when it's in that cherry tree of mine. And the rabbits, you know, they're good company. But of course, the neighbors, they'd say, Peddler, someday you'll have nothing to peddle and nothing to eat. And of course, you know, the neighbors, they were right, because the neighbors are always right. And they were. There came a winter, in fact, when the snow, it came very early, and it stayed late. And finally, the peddler, he had nothing to peddle. He had nothing to eat. Hungry, cold. And if you've ever done that, you know you're bound to have an amazing dream. <laughs> and one night the peddler, he, he had one. He, he dreamt that he saw right at the foot of his bed, he saw Saint, um, Saint, uh, well, what saint do you think it was? Exactly, it was Saint Patrick. <laughs> 
And of course, St. Patrick, he was standing right at the foot of the peddler's bed. And St. Patrick said, man, he said, man, get up now, peddler, get up. Walk to Dublin, stand on the Liffey Bridge, man, and you'll hear what you're to hear, and you'll see what you're to see now. Get up, go. Well, you know, fool that he was, he got up on the middle of a cold winter night, he put on this thin rag of a coat that he had, and he walked, and it took him three days and three nights to walk all the way to Dublin. And he found the Liffey Bridge there, and he stood on it just as the sun was coming up. I was excited. And all day long, the peddler, he waited there on the bridge. He was watching the people, you know. He was watching them going this way to the fairs, and that way to the shops, and this way to the market, and all day long. Well, he listened, and, and he waited, and watched, and listened, and waited, and watched, and listened, and watched, and waited, and listened, and waited, and watched, and listened. And... At the end of the day, no one had said one word to him. And for the first time in his life, that peddler, he was truly afraid. Because he knew that he didn't have the strength now to walk all the way back to Ballardeen. And with a stiff wind blowing in his back, he made his way off the bridge. He found a little alley there that was sheltered, and he laid down. And just as soon as his head touched the cobbled stones, he was asleep. And that would have been his final sleep. But the innkeeper came around the corner right then. Now the innkeeper, he'd been watching the peddler out his window all day long. And he saw him lying there and said, well, so that's where you've come to. Tell me something, man. I've been watching you all day long, standing on that bridge like a fool. You weren't peddling, you weren't begging. What were you doing? Oh, the peddler, he could barely speak. You know, he was so weak. And the innkeeper said, you come with me. He took him to the inn and he sat him down. He sat him at a table. He gave him a pint. He gave him a bowl, a stool. And then the peddler, he ate the best meal he'd eaten in months. And when he finished, the innkeeper said, Now tell me, man, how is it with you? What were you doing on the bridge all day long? The peddler said, Well, I, I had a dream. And St. Patrick said, Go stand on the Liffey Bridge, and you'll hear what you're to hear, and you'll see what you're to see. And so I did. And the innkeeper said, oh, 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 man, you're daft. Look at you. Nothing but a bag of bones. And running off when someone in a dream tells you to. Man, go home, take care of yourself. I saved your life, I can't do it again. Well, the peddler knew the innkeeper was right. He thanked him for his hospitality, for his kindness, and, and he made his way out the door. And as he did, the innkeeper said, but peddler, wait there a moment. You know, that dream of yours, it reminds me that years ago I had a dream. In fact, St. Patrick, he, he said something to me. He said, that, he said, innkeeper, he said, get up, on the middle of a cold night, you know, and and walked to the town of, uh, what was it, uh, Ballardine, yeah, wherever on God's earth that is. And if you were to find a crossroads there in a mud and wattle hut, you'd see a cherry tree. And he said if you were to dig beneath it, ha <laughs> ha, you'd unearth a great chest of gold. <laughs> Where would I be, a man of means, an innkeeper, if I listened to nonsense like that? Well, the peddler said, you know, I don't rightly know where you'd be. But to himself, he said, I damn well know where I should be. <laughs> he made his way home in two days and two nights. And there, leaning against his own hut, he found his own shovel. He took it, and right in his own front yard, he dug beneath his own cherry tree. And he dug, and he dug, and at last, he hit something. He brushed away the dirt. And sure enough, he unearthed a huge chest of gold. And when he opened it, ah, it brimmed full of gold. From that day forward, the peddler of Ballardine, he lived free from want. But they'll tell you, though, know, that all the good, all the fine, all the grand, all the great things the peddler did for this world with all of that gold, that is the stuff of a hundred, hundred stories. And all those stories, just like this one, you know, they finally do come to an end. And that's the end of the story called The Peddler of Ballardine, County Roscommon, Ireland.